Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you are joining me for a cozy little video. This is a different setup than I normally have for my videos and it's kind of a special video because today is actually my 28th birthday. So my best friend just came over and she brought me some lunch and she brought me some Starbucks coffee. I got um, the lavender frappuccino. I didn't even know that was a thing, but I saw it on there and it sounded good. So I added white chocolate to it and it is so yummy. But besides the point, today is my 28th birthday, so I thought it would be really fun to do a video sharing 27 lessons that I've learned in 27 years. And these will be kind of all over the place in different areas. Faith lessons that I've learned, marriage, parenting, life, like random life hacks. Like I think this will just be a fun video to get to know me a little bit better and just share some of what I've walked through in my life and just a different style video than I normally do. So I'm really excited for it and I'm excited to get into it. Okay, these are going to be in no particular order, so they're not in order of importance or anything like that. I just wanted to clarify that first. But the first lesson that I've learned is often our biggest trials or tests in our life really turn into the biggest victories in our life. I know some of the hard seasons that we've walked through with infertility or with seasons that we had to walk away from things that we really loved or seasons where we were just praying for provision and it seemed like it wasn't coming oftentimes actually in every single circumstance that I can think of those led to the biggest victories on the other side we just couldn't see all of kind of like the refining by fire that was happening in the midst of those trials and the hard circumstances we were learning and growing so much more than we ever imagined and that has been true and really helped me to remember as I walk through trials now to look back and look at the other trials and hard seasons that we've walked through and how much beauty and abundance has come out of that, whether our prayer was answered in the way we expected or hoped it to be or not. Like there's so much beauty there. This next one is kind of random. Don't check the car seat at the airport under the plane. Don't do it. I can tell the full story sometime, but basically when we had two kids under two, we had, let's see, an 18 month old and a two month old, so still a newborn. And we flew to Oregon for a family vacation and basically one thing after another, we got in a wreck on the way to the airport. We ended up missing, there was an issue with the transportation in the parking lot. So we missed the bus to get us to the actual terminal that we needed to get to, blah, blah, blah. All of these things connected. And we ended up stranded in an airport overnight because we missed our connecting flight and we had checked the car seats. And they had gone on ahead of us even though we didn't get on that flight so they were in our final destination and we were stuck i think in las vegas or something like that and we literally could not leave the airport so our family left and went and got a hotel thinking that we'd be right behind them and we realized that there was no way for us to leave and no one would even let us leave if even if we wanted to because we did not have car seats for the children so we were stuck in the airport overnight <laughs> with a 18 month old and a two month old also because of covid and everything else all the restaurants were closed we literally came so close to running out of diapers completely because obviously we didn't pack for 24 hours like in our diaper bag um actually no it was over 24 hours i think we had enough for 24 hours but it was over that at that point anyways long story short it was not the most fun experience of my life and now we anytime we fly we get those little bags that you can put on your back and we carry the car seat with us through the airport even though it's inconvenient because then at least we can leave if something happens we can go get a hotel or go someplace else instead of trying to sleep in an airport with two children a year and a half and under so learn from me. <laughs> Another thing in the parenting realm is if I have to be out the door at a certain time, my children will sleep in for the first time in an entire year. They will never sleep in any other day, but that day they will sleep in. So I need to plan accordingly in order to get out the door on time. Simple lesson, but you know, every time, every time it never fails. If you keep saying that you will do this thing or that thing or whatever that you have on your mind once you get through this season, like once I get through this podcast launch for me, or once I get through this busy work season, or once we get through, you know, my kid's birthday, whatever it might be, if you keep continually saying, once we get through this, then we'll do that, you'll never actually do the thing you want to do. Because I know for me, I can get stuck in that really easily where things feel really busy and I'm like, okay, I really want to go hang out with this friend or I want to help in this way with someone. I I want to serve I want to do all these extra things but right now my plate is really full so I'll do that once I get through this season and something that I've realized at least in my life is that often one busy season rolls into another and another and another and so if you're not intentional to just carve out the time for the things that are really priorities for you right now whether that's something 
really small or whether it's bigger, if you don't carve out that time now, you probably never will because one season can easily just keep rolling into the next until it's been five years and you said you wanted to start like whatever, bringing meals for some friends that are going through a hard season, you wanna be available to do that, but it was always too busy of a time to do that. Just start doing it, just carve out the time and just start small and do it now. Hi friends, I'm interrupting this video really quick because I wanted to share with you that the Simple Rhythms for Busy Moms podcast is live and people are literally listening to it as I'm recording this, which is wild and absolutely crazy. And I have a quick favor to ask you. Would you do me a really big favor? The best birthday present that you could give me is to go listen to the podcast and leave a quick written review to let me know what you thought about it. I would absolutely love that. Having as many reviews as possible in the first few days really helps determine the success of the show and it helps push it out to more people, more moms that really need this message and really need this encouragement. And I would be so, so grateful if you joined me and just linking arms with me to help me share and promote the show and leave a quick 30 second review. It really takes literally 30 30 seconds or less it's so simple to do and I would love for you to do that so I'll leave the link down in the description below for both Apple Podcasts and Spotify and I would be so grateful for your help and also I would just love for you to listen to the episodes and let me know what you think so thank you so much I'm so excited that it's finally out there I literally cannot believe we're already here and it's so fun that it's during my birthday week as well I have been blown away by what God is doing in this space already and the community that he is building I, I don't even have words, honestly. I'm just so grateful and I'm so excited for it to officially be out there. So thank you so much for cheering me on and supporting me and we'll get back to the video. Another thing I've learned, voice memos save so much time. This is just a random little life hack, but voice memos save so much time. I use them all the time. I used to be so afraid that people would not like them, that it would be annoying, whatever. Pretty much now, if you are texting me something that requires more than like a two to three sentence response, I'm gonna send you a voice memo and it's honestly, it's so much easier. You can listen to it really quickly, you can respond with text or a voice memo, but then I can get my words out and it's so much easier to multitask with little kids. So don't be afraid of sending voice memos. I also feel like it's a lot more connecting and you feel more connected to the person you're sending it to, so it really builds a lot more community that way also. Keep a running list in your notes app, like keep a running list of gift ideas for your husband and your kids. This has been so key for us. We will just keep a list and every time one of our kids says something that they want, I'll just go in and quickly write it down. Or if my husband mentions something in passing that I know nothing about, um, you know, like a gun thing or I don't know what else. That's pretty much most of the things he asks. Sometimes like survival gear he's very into that he thinks that's really cool so anyways if he mentions something in passing i'll go ahead and write it down quickly because i will definitely forget and especially if i don't know anything about it i will not remember what he was talking about and then when it comes closer to birthdays or christmases i have something to pull from for our own gift ideas that we're buying for our family but also to send out to other family members who are asking for ideas and things like that so that's just really helpful Another thing that kind of popped into my head along with that is if you are going to the store and your kids are asking for toys often, like if you go to Walmart and you're going down the aisles and they see all the toys and they're constantly saying, mommy, can we get this? Can we get this? Can we get this? Something that has worked really well for us. I think I originally heard this from Milena Ciciotti, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if they are asking for a toy, I'll tell them that we're not gonna get it today, but we can take a picture so that we can remember for their birthday or Christmas, whichever is coming up next. And we'll just take a quick picture on the phone and then I like to save it to a little album so I can go and find all those pictures. And then you have more gift ideas kind of along the same idea as the note, but it also stops the arguing. <laughs> like they don't keep whining about it. As soon as I say, can I take a picture so we can remember it later? They're totally fine with that and they move on. It hasn't been an issue. So that has been awesome. I'm gonna do a few in a certain category in a row so that I can kind of like lump them together. Um, but we're going to talk about some of the ones in marriage. So the first thing, the first lesson that I've learned is to forget about the socks next to the hamper because it's not, it's not worth the argument and it's not worth stressing over. So in our marriage, something just really small, but Matt does not like to put his socks actually in the hamper. He literally will take them and put them right next to the hamper on the ground. I mean, I'm talking like an inch or two inches from the actual hamper itself right next to it, but he won't put it in the hamper. And for the longest time in our marriage, that drove me crazy. I felt so frustrated and I was like, it's literally right there. It takes just as much effort as putting it next to the hamper. Why would you intentionally like not go all the way to put it in the hamper? And a few years ago, I just realized, you know what? Life is really short. He is not putting the socks next to the hamper to drive me crazy or to make me angry or to make me feel like he doesn't care about what, you know, me keeping a tidy home or whatever. Like, that's just part of who he is. And 
it's really not a big deal. Is it really that big of a deal? As much as I'm saying to him, like, hey, can you just please put your socks in the hamper? Just go the extra two steps. If I'm telling him it's not that big of a deal, isn't it just as much not as big of a, not a big deal for me to then go pick up the socks and put it in the hamper myself? Like, just take that on myself. And so a few years ago, I, once I thought it through like that, I realized, yeah, no, it's really not a big deal. If I'm telling him it's no big deal, then I might as well just do it myself and just serve him in that way. And it honestly has changed a lot. I feel like going through loss and grief in different areas of our life really changed my perspective on a lot of things. And there just are things that, yes, maybe it's a minor inconvenience, but you can still serve and love your spouse through that. They're not intentionally trying to be annoying or to make you angry. You can just love them by picking up their socks and putting it in the hamper and not saying a single thing about it and not making it a big deal. Life is too short. The next thing with marriage is I've really learned that praying together is such a connection point. Vulnerability really brings so much connection and I feel like we would pray together like at meals and things like that throughout our marriage for a long time. But for a long season of our marriage, we were not just like praying throughout the day for different things that were on our mind together. And we've really worked on making that more of a priority in our marriage so that if I am stressed out about something or if Matt is, you know, thinking through something at work or if we just have a lot on our minds in whatever area of life that might be, we will often now ask each other to pray for that, like right in that moment, whether we're in the car, whether we, you know, are just getting home and we're just catching up after the day and he can feel that I'm a little stressed out or whatever. It takes a little bit of laying down my pride to be like, hey, can you just pray for me right now? Um, but that's putting us together at the feet of Jesus and uniting our hearts, not only in the Lord, but in each other too, like both at the same time. And it brings so much connection. It brings us closer to the Lord and bringing him in throughout the day, not just individually on our own, but into our marriage to pray over these things together. But it also invites that vulnerability to just be like, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. And to not only just tell him what I was struggling with, because I very often would tell him the things that I was struggling with. That wasn't really an issue. But not only talking about it to him, but saying, hey, can we pray about this together? Because ultimately that is, that's the first thing that we need to be doing. We need to be praying about it more than we're talking about it. And so that has been really huge in our marriage. Another thing is that sometimes serving the other person in marriage doesn't mean that you actually have to add anything extra or adding something else onto your plate, but sometimes it just means putting down your phone, looking into their eyes and actually fully listening to what they're saying and, and asking them intentional questions then after that, just being fully present. Because I know when I have a lot in my mind, it can be really easy, even if, you know, I'm trying to focus on what he's saying, but I'm thinking through something in my own mind about what my day has been like or the next thing that I have to do or whatever. It can be really easy to get into the mindset of, I'm, I'm listening, I'm half listening, I'm not really fully engaged, I'm listening enough because I don't want to be rude, but I'm also not listening enough that I can give him intentional questions to ask back to fully like engage in that conversation. So sometimes it just means putting down your phone and looking in their eyes and fully committing to like be involved in this conversation, ask them intentional questions and just be focused right there in the moment. The last thing I have in the marriage category is, is to still send fun texts to flirt with your husband. I think that's really really important. We have been married almost nine years now and you know it's just important to sometimes send your husband a quick text to let him know that you're thinking about him, you know, flirt with him a little bit, keep like that spark still alive in your marriage. It has been I don't know. It's just been really fun. Try to take yourself back to when you were dating and think about the text that you would have sent if you saw him walking by out the window and send that text then. Or, you know, when you were newlyweds, whatever that might be. But keep like that romance and the fun alive in your marriage. That goes a long way. And also just like hype your spouse up. I think that we are meant to be our spouse's biggest cheerleaders. And so, you know, if you do see him and he's looking extra good one day, let him know. Like just send him the text and make him feel good. Make him feel like the absolute best man out there. Okay, let's go into the friendship category. I have a few things written down here and I honestly, I don't know if I've ever really talked about friendship on here before, but I think it's really important to talk about, especially as busy moms that have a lot on our plate. Friendship is super important. The first thing that I have written down is that putting yourself out there, even if you feel like you're being a little bit extra or awkward or whatever, sometimes, oftentimes, that leads to the best friendships. So if you meet someone, even if it's like a very random connection, like you're at the park and your kids are playing together or whatever, sometimes it feels incredibly awkward to go up and be like, hey, 
how are like start a conversation and get to know them or if you've been talking kind of small talk throughout it then to end at the end and be like hey i really enjoyed this conversation i would love to hang out again and let our kids play together can i get your number so we can text and meet up or if you're talking online and you connect on social media and they live locally like just being like hey i would love to make another friend that has kids similar in age to me or whatever you connected over just reaching out to make that first step i think everyone feels a little bit awkward making the first step but someone has to make the first step. So if you desire to have more friendships with mom friends around you, sometimes you have to be the one to step out and feel a little bit awkward and feel a little weird and be like, hey, I really enjoyed our conversation at church the other day. I would love to hang out more and get to know you. Would you like to come over for coffee sometime? Like, it's so simple. It really, we don't need to overthink it and it can lead to so many blessings of just experiencing life and community together. Another big lesson that I've learned in friendship is if you want to have intentional like quality friendships that really invest in you and your life, you have to be that friend first. You have to take that step first to be that friend and to model that and to display those characteristics. So make sure if you're feeling like that's lacking in your life, maybe look at the friendships that you do have and just take a closer look at it and see if you have been being really intentional in those friendships or if you could show up a little more consistently or just be a little more intentional with how you're trying to connect with that friend to go a little bit deeper and start with that first. And kind of on that same note, like friendship is not something that you can just sit there and dream about having all these best friends that you can hang out and do life with and be in community with and you know kind of like raise your kids together like get together for play dates and get together for family dinners and just do life together you can't just sit around dreaming of that and then not actually do anything about it like sitting there and hoping for those things to happen is great and it's great to have that desire but if you're not doing anything to actually invest in those friendships they're not just going to appear out of thin air and just suddenly be there i've realized that friendship really does require work and it requires effort like on both ends um, and it's not something that just happens overnight and so you have to be intentional to connect with friends to have consistency in how you communicate with them and even sometimes just being like having unique ways to connect if you're in a season where you can't get together like face to face for whatever reason there's lots of circumstances but if you can't get together with that friend face to face for a season or not as much as you would like to being intentional to find like unique ways to still stay in touch like send voice memos check in with them throughout the week ask them you know a high and low of their week or how you could be praying for them just being really intentional to not just let all that time go and to let that friendship just fade away but still check in with them and still be a part of their life and kind of know what's going on in their life so that you can be praying for them and talking with them and even if you're not together in person still be really intentional to like continue growing that friendship okay this one i really really love so i love and i've started doing this and i need to do it actually with more friends so i need to update this list so this is a good reminder but keep a note in your notes app as you can tell i use my notes app for everything but keep a note in your notes app for some of your closest friends and ask them some specific questions that you can keep in there. Like what is their go-to coffee order? Write it down, put it in there. What's their favorite color? Do they have anything specific that they love to like collect almost or that they gravitate towards? Like, like some people, if they find, you know, a cute planter, um, they just love to get all the cute planters to have in their house. Like that's their thing that if they see one, they're going to get one or some people it's candles or, you know, whatever that might be for you. If there's a thing like that, write it down in your phone about them. Or if they have, you know, their favorite Sonic order or, um, their favorite fast food place, any little tip like that about them, keep it in a running list and you can just send some out, send them out right now. Text a few of your good friends, come up with a little list, asking a few questions. What's your favorite drink? You know, your favorite coffee drink. What's your favorite Sonic drink? Do you have a favorite fast? food place that you love um, do you have a favorite snack like what's your favorite kind of chocolate just a few different little things like that that you can keep in a note and then when they're having a hard day or they're going through a hard season then you can just show up and just bless them having that note helps so much to be like hey I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna drop off your favorite coffee on your doorstep you don't even have to open the door if you don't want to I'm just gonna leave it there for you but I know that you're going through a really hard time right now and I just want to bless you and let you know that I'm praying for you super simple but i feel like that's a really intentional easy way to let people know that you're there for them and really show up and serve them well another lesson that i've learned is that if the lord randomly brings a friend to mind that you haven't talked to in a while or maybe they bring 
maybe he brings like a specific verse even to mind with someone or a specific thing that you want to check in like I've had this happen so often with friendships with people that I'm not talking to every day but they just randomly come into mind and I just feel like the Lord is nudging me to reach out and say hey how are you doing or to reach out and ask about a certain project that they're doing or something like that and it has been so cool because I feel weird doing it because I'm like they're gonna think I'm so weird I haven't talked to them in a year like why would I just send them a random message about this but being intentional to actually show up and send that message it's so cool to see how God works because it never fails that if the Lord brought them to mind he brought them to mind for a purpose and oftentimes they will even tell you like oh my goodness this was such an answer to prayer for me or I really needed this today thank you so much for checking in with me um, and it just I feel like it leaves room for you to see how the Holy Spirit is working and it encourages both of you that's what I've seen happen in those friendships is that it encourages the person that you reached out to because they feel seen and they know that the Lord is thinking of them even in these small things or big things whatever it might be they feel encouraged by the Lord that he sent someone to check in on them and you feel encouraged because you reached out to that person and you can see the Lord working and how he nudged your heart to do that and you're encouraged to just keep surrendering your days to him and to keep stepping out in faith and letting him use your days for what he has planned for them and so that has been a really big encouragement for me in my friendships. I want to talk about a few of the lessons that I've learned in faith which obviously could apply to any aspect of life but I think one of the big things that I realized is that showing up consistently in your relationship with the Lord like daily um, you know in prayer spending time with him in your quiet time daily all of those things that that doesn't do anything to uh, like gain us extra favor in God's eyes to make us more worthy of his love it doesn't do anything to change any of that but what we gain and the fruit from that that shows in our life and our hearts is so incredibly worth it. Like it's not about, you know, pleasing the Lord more by showing up every day. It's about truly being close to him, being consistent in daily relationship with him changes us. It changes our hearts. It gives me the strength that I need to get through each day. It gives me the wisdom and discernment to know how to spend my time each day. It gives me the patience that I need with my kids. I need it. I need it. And I see that so much in my daily life. And I feel like it's just a reminder that I need to keep plastered across my forehead to know that this like I know how much fruit that there is in that. But sometimes I get almost in the mindset of like, you know checking off boxes and like showing up every day makes me a good christian and it's not about that it's really just not about that it is about coming to the lord giving him your days and getting that strength from him it's about what we get from him he transforms our lives by the daily renewing of our minds and that's through being in relationship with him day in and day out this is kind of like a random one but I just feel like someone needs to hear this today, so I'm gonna put it in here. When I was struggling with making quiet time a consistent part of my life, because I have definitely had a lot of seasons, and I had a lot of years, a lot of years, where I struggled to show up every day to read my Bible and be in a relationship with the Lord. And like I just said, we're not doing it to check off the box. We're not doing it to be a good Christian. We're doing it for the fruit that it puts in our own lives and to change our hearts and to be more in line with Jesus every single day by doing that. So we just talked about that. But when I was struggling to make that a consistent part of my life, I really enjoyed using devotionals. And I feel like in the Christian world, sometimes devotionals can kind of get like pooped on a lot. Like they're just, you know, they're not deep enough and I don't know I just feel like sometimes people can talk down on them a lot and for me I needed something that I knew I could show up and do regularly and that kind of broke it down a little bit for me because before I was getting in the Bible every single day just opening my Bible felt like to just sit down and read something that felt very overwhelming because I didn't even know I didn't know where to start and when I was reading through it sometimes I didn't depending on what part of the Bible I didn't even really understand what it was saying which definitely makes sure that you have a good translation that makes a really big difference I love my ESV Bible but I know lots of people also love NIV obviously there's lots of translations but anyways don't start with like a New King James version or something like that like that would be hard to read um but the devotional really broke it down. So it gave me some place to start so that I was getting in the Bible every day, even if it was just a verse, I was getting in the Bible. And then I was reading a context alongside of that that really helped to break down like what it actually was and give me something small to start with. And yes, the devotionals are not as deep because oftentimes the devotionals aren't so much, I guess, breaking down that specific verse they're more giving you context for how this could apply to your life but in the beginning that's what I needed and that's what I needed most and so 
don't be ashamed to start with a devotional. Now at this point, I like you kind of move through, I feel like you go through a devotional season and then as you get more consistent in your quiet time, you start craving, wanting just more. You want something a little bit deeper that really goes through the Bible verse by verse teaches you the context of what's happening in the Bible, breaks it all down for you, and so you just continue evolving in that. But don't be afraid to start with the devotional. That's truly what I needed in order to start being consistent and make that a rhythm and routine in my life, and that's what helped me to keep showing up every day. And then I just grew from there and just went deeper and deeper. If we don't share what God is doing in our lives, this has been something that has been true in my life right now that I have been seeing all over the place. If we're not sharing what he's actually doing behind the scenes in our hearts, like with the people closest to us, whether that's our family, our husband, you know, even our kids, some, um, our best friends, all of that, like people that we're doing life with daily. If we don't take the time to share with them just different things that you're learning, etc., we miss so many opportunities that the Holy Spirit is working. And like, for instance, this week, I reached out to a, a dear friend who honestly is like a past mentor of mine. She's incredible. And I had her written down for months as someone I would love to interview on the podcast, but I didn't have a specific topic necessarily. There's a lot of different things she could talk about. And I was praying over the podcast. I was praying over, you know, interviewing people, if I should start doing that soon, or if I should wait a little bit longer, just kind of praying over the show and the direction that the Lord wanted to take it. And he brought this friend to mine specifically with a specific topic. Topic. And I sent her a Voxer and I felt kind of weird because I was like, look, this is really kind of out of left field. It's just very random. I don't even know if you want to be on the podcast at all. And then I don't even know if this topic specifically is something that you would feel comfortable talking about or something that you feel like you have a lot of wisdom to share on or not. And she responded back and it was so, so cool because she said that the Holy Spirit, that is literally exactly, that topic exactly was what the Lord had been working on in her heart that he was preparing her to share about. And then she sent me a screenshot of this list of people that she had and with this message that she was wanting to share, I was at the top of the list. There was a list of girls on there and I was at the top of the list of people that came to mind um, like that she kind of wanted to share this message with or when she was thinking about creating content online, like these were the people that she had in mind that she was creating this for essentially because you know behind the scenes you kind of need to have a specific person to create the content for in order to make sure that you're like speaking directly to that person and you know like why you're creating the content. It just kind of helps behind the scenes when you're doing all of that work to make sure that your message is like, I guess, concise and specific like to that person. I don't know. That's kind of like a behind the scenes of content creation, but it was just so cool and it encouraged her because obviously like the Lord is working and opening up opportunities for her and continuing to just show her the path that she needs to go on. It was a confirmation for her, but it was also so encouraging to me that even though I felt like it was random reaching out, God was working behind the scenes in that. And I had a few different people too with the launch team for the podcast that I reached out to that were on my heart and I reached out to them and asked them if they would be a, willing to be a part and help me share and promote and like review the show and they responded back and said like that that was on their heart and they had already signed up and I hadn't even known yet and it was just so cool to see like God is already making a way he's already making this happen before I even reach out he knew and he's making this possible when you take the time to actually open up and just share little things like even if they feel small to you I just feel like you can see so many little encouragements that are left of the Holy Spirit just working through you and in you and in your life and in others lives around you and it's so encouraging okay I could go off on this topic forever so I'm not gonna like make a sermon out of this but just the idea that rest is a blessing it's not a punishment and a burden to bear it truly is a gift from the Lord and it is something that we should enjoy doing that we should set aside time to do and I don't need to see it as like a burden but actually take it as the gift it is and how much that brings fruit in my life that has been a whole journey I'm continually learning in that but rest is a gift such a gift and I don't need to run myself into the ground until I literally cannot go anymore and then I'm forced to rest because I'm so burnt out and exhausted but I need to make it an intentional part of my life to experience that gift every single week as the Lord like created for it to be. Okay this is a little bit of a heavier one and honestly it feels a little random to include in here but I'm just trusting that the Holy Spirit knows that this is for someone specifically and I'm just going to share it anyways but it's something that I and we and our family have learned about grief in the past few years. We lost Matt's dad very unexpectedly a few years ago and like out of nowhere, he was 51 years old, died in his sleep, um, completely total shock. Um, 
I don't, I probably haven't really talked about that on here, but it was one of the hardest seasons that we've ever walked through and watching your spouse walk through a grief like that is, yeah, I, I, I'm probably not going to share all of it here, but it's gut wrenching. It's awful. It is heartbreaking. It is not something that I ever want to walk through ever again. And, um, anyways, but what we learned about grief through that, we saw an analogy, I would say a few months probably after this happened and it was talking about grief and it was the analogy that grief basically it's like you have this box with a big red button on it and there's a ball inside of it and at the beginning of your grief journey when it's all fresh and new the ball is pretty much as big as the box is so it's just this big ball and there's a button at the top and so obviously anytime it jiggles around at all it's bouncing on the alarm button and it's going off completely um very quickly like very often if you move at all it's triggering that right and as you go on in the grief journey the ball gets smaller and smaller and smaller so that it's still there you're still going to hit that button where it takes you back to those moments where you're just you know you're struggling you're having a hard time with it just all of the emotions everything you're still going to hit that that's still going to be there it's never going to leave you it's still going to be a part of you but it's going to be less frequent over time and as time goes on and as you heal and you continue in life that ball is going to continue to get smaller and it, as it bounces around it's going to hit that trigger less and less and less and we thought that was a really cool depiction then of grief and I would say even now we still think that that's the most accurate depiction that we've seen and so again this feels kind of random to include in here but if you're walking through grief or loss in any form whatever that looks like in your life I hope so that is an encouragement that if you are fresh in this journey that it's not always going to feel like this and it does get better and life does go on and that person does not ever leave you it's always a part of your story it's always a part of what you've walked through um, and it's always going to be there in some capacity but it does get smaller and it does get more manageable that was the biggest thing it does get more manageable as you move on I know that was kind of a heavy one and this isn't a grief video so it feels kind of weird to just like move on to the next one but I also know that I have several more to get through so I, I just don't want to include that. But the next one that I have written down is to take time to enjoy your life like right now um, and it does kind of go along with grief I feel like because it's something that we have learned through that season that we've walked through. Um, if you're constantly comparing your life and looking ahead to the next season that is to come, like maybe you're single right now and you're really looking ahead to the time when you are dating or when you get married and then when you get married it's when you have kids and then when you have kids it's like when you have a little bit older kids and you're out of the little years. I mean there's always a next thing to look for but if you're constantly just focused on getting to the next thing you're completely missing the season that you're actually in and I know I can be so guilty of this naturally of just wanting to work and get to the next thing and get to the next exciting like milestone and all of that and I'm trying to just this is something parenting has really taught me to slow down because we don't get this time back we only get so much time on this earth in general and we also definitely only get so much time with our kids in our home and when they're little and so I want to make sure that I'm taking the time consistently to not just be focused on everything that has to get done but take time to enjoy my life to slow down and just enjoy the exact season that we're in with my kids at the ages that they're at we are so blessed to all be here together like just the fact that I have a husband and three healthy kids, that alone is blessings beyond all measure. And I want to take the time to soak that in and be grateful for that and not take that for granted. I have a few parenting ones to knock through and then I have I think one more after that. So the first one is just kind of a practical one which I would say to invest in a nice stroller that you can expand as you go. If you want to have more kids make sure it's a nice stroller that can become a double stroller in the future. It's just a random little one that I wanted to include because it's helpful to know and if you buy the really cheap ones you'll go through them a lot faster they don't last nearly as long so just invest in the nice one and invest in one that can expand as you grow your family also which I will say we have a super nice stroller but we also got it on Facebook marketplace for literally 90 bucks and it's normally like 900 to a thousand it might even be a little more than that now but um it, yeah, so I'm not saying you can't find it used or whatever as well, but invest in a nice brand that's actually going to stand up and last. This has been a huge lesson that I'm still learning, um, if I'm being honest, but I've really learned in parenting that the moments that have been most monumental in teaching my kids about Jesus and laying down like a biblical foundation for them, 
the moments that have been the most monumental to remember have always happened at inconvenient times every single time and just reminding myself and I still have to do this all the time that taking the time to fully answer their questions and even if it's an inconvenient time still taking the time to slow down and answer the questions that they have because if they're curious about it they're curious about it right now and they want to learn about it right now and God is doing something in their heart and so I want to be able to just be faithful to plant those seeds and to take the time to plant those seeds and not just be rushing through life so much that I miss those opportunities. Helping your kids develop skills to calm down and also to know what they need has also been another lesson that I've learned just as my kids have started to get a little bit older out of the toddler years my oldest um taking the time to actually help her to learn those coping skills to calm down taking deep breaths showing her like hey do you need a minute do you need a hug right now or do you need to be by yourself like talk verbally talking through those things with her so that as she grows we've really noticed that she's starting to be able to do those things herself and she'll come to us sometimes and she'll actually even tell us like hey mommy i need a little bit of help calming down and then i can sit with her and i can help her calm down but the fact that she recognizes that she is getting out of control and she needs help calming down i think that that is huge and so i look back and i'm really grateful that we did put in those that work at the beginning to really show them how to calm down and obviously it's not perfect like my kids still throw fits they're normal kids things happen they still have moments where things are overstimulating and they just get really overwhelmed and they're not perfect like I said they can't do this perfectly on their own but I think we're starting to see that fruit as they get a little bit older that the work really is worth it and it really is super helpful for them to understand what they need and to be able to communicate that to me another thing is to always be humble enough to apologize to your kids and this is something that I've learned it really makes a big impact on your kids like letting them see that you're not perfect and when you mess up and when you yell or when you aren't patient or when you don't have enough grace for a certain thing going back to apologize to them and tell them about the sin that was in your heart i like to sit down and just literally explain to them i think it's a really um practical way to lay out the gospel to them of hey this is what was going on and this is why i was frustrated giving them context but then also saying but mommy reacted in sin like mommy was reacting in anger or mommy was not having patience etc and talking through that and then praying with them apologizing to them and then moving on like showing them how to model that in life i think it's so helpful for them to be able to see that and it's also made a really big difference for us in just seeing them apologize to their siblings or to us for things as well especially my oldest that is four she'll come to me and apologize for things several hours later that we have already resolved and she's just been thinking about it and i really think that modeling it in your life like showing it as a parent both in your relationship with your kids your relationship with your husband even friends or whatever like showing that you're not perfect and showing them how to do that because they're seeing you live that out is i don't know at least for us it has been really really huge okay and this is just a random little life hack but when you wash your face at night take the towel that you use to dry off your face and just wipe around the bathroom counter so that you can keep it clean. That helps so much. I'm actually trying to be a little bit better at my evening routine as far as like washing my face and stuff because even though I am getting close to 30, I still don't have the best skincare routine if I'm being honest. So I'm really trying to prioritize that and start using a few different things. And so because of that, I've been obviously in my bathroom doing that every night and trying to make that a habit. And so taking the towel, I saw it on Instagram or something, taking the towel that you use and just wiping down the counter helps it to keep, you know, little hairs or like little whatever, dust, anything like that. If you're wiping it down every day when you wipe your face, it actually stays pretty clean, which is really nice to just have a clean sink and not be able, you know, you, and not have to worry about it. So little hack for you. I know this video had a lot of different categories and things but I hope this was enjoyable to watch in some way and just see some of the lessons that I've learned. I would love to know some of the lessons that resonated with you or if you can think of any that pop into your head that have been big in your life recently I would love to hear that. If you are new around here I would love for you to subscribe and join this little YouTube family and if you're not new around here thank you so much for joining me for another video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye friends!